Well, it's Friday and I've got terrible, terrible allergies. At least I think I have terrible allergies. I don't know, I slept like hell. Is that because you couldn't breathe? <sighs> it was no fun. I didn't enjoy it one bit, but I'm awake now and we're kicking along. It's Friday and, uh, and it's Friday. I don't know, this coming weekend, I think the only thing I'm really excited about personally is um, going and finding a used solid core door at Habitat because I'm going to make the workbench in the garage this weekend and that's going to be awesome. And I am truly, truly looking forward to that. I'm also truly looking forward to going down and getting some soda because I we normally have sodas around and we don't have any sodas because everybody drank them. And I didn't, and somehow two 12 packs just went missing. Did you look in the back of the car? I don't have any keys for the back of your car. I would love to go look in the back of your car, but there are no keys. The keys are upstairs. I'm not going to go upstairs. Okay. I'm just saying. I don't want to because then I'll get grabbed. Am I reading or am you? No, no, you're going to read. I'm just looking at this to make sure get anything in my head. Oh, wait. We should do wrist check. Mm hmm So, a funny thing happened on the way to the wrist check. Uh, the entirety of the rest of the day got completely away from us, uh, and then it got the rest of it got away from me. And now it is seven minutes to midnight, and uh, I don't have access to Sabrina's wrist uh, to show you what she was wearing. So I'm not gonna spoil the surprise. I'll just make sure she thinks about wearing it again next week because it is a cool watch. One of my favorites, actually. Really cool watch. And one of the things I love about it is was, uh, I bought it um, from a very nice gentleman, uh, a Rolex tech, and he serviced it in his own time. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful watch. Just a beautiful watch. It's nearly the same exact movement as a Paul Newman Daytona. Not quite. Almost the same. Yeah, seven minutes. Anyway, I had been two-fisting it. The Boba Fett, whatever you want to call it, or don't want to call it. I'm like, well, you know, the strap is kind of ratty. Maybe I could, like, put, you know, get, like, some red leather. You know, try my hand at strap making again. Easy, make it your thing. Pretend this, that's a strap. Let's pretend that's a strap. I don't know. Of course, a sport watch on leather. But, you know, he's Boba Fett. How often has he gone swimming? Uh, let's see. Oh, and the other side is actually, man, this thing has just been on my wrist. I've been wearing it and wearing it and wearing it and wearing it ever since uh, I did the mail call where I showed this one or talked about this one because of the case back. But it's fortuitous, of course, that... Uh, that I am wearing this because we can talk about that case back sticker again because I want to talk some about some other ones in a later segment. In the meantime, isn't that isn't that great? And for me, it's a very unique piece because it came to me in this case. I bought this. The numbers didn't make sense to me. I more or less, I I it, I, I just I didn't quite understand the mystery of how. A 6309 with this this perfect setup for 1977 loom. That's what this is. In 76 and 77, sometimes into 78, <clears throat> with 6306s and 6309s, you'll get this beautiful buttercream dial loom. And the hand loom is always white. You see the same thing on 6159s, uh, 7010s, the grandfather tunas. You see that on them almost every time. And the ones on those are usually even deeper, like egg yolk yellow. But they came out of the factory like this. It's one of the most recognizable traits of, you know, instantly recognizable traits of an early Seiko. So I was really confused when it showed up and it was in this amazing, perfect case. And the case back was dated towards the end of 1980. So that was strange. Uh, and then I went through and I serviced it and it opened it up. And in fact, the dial was dated, uh, I think, 7-7 seven, seven on the back of the dial. 
think, yeah, I think it was seven, seven in the back of the dial, seven, eight, seven, nine, something like that. Whatever it is, it matched the case back that I put on this, which I should have checked, which is seven, oh God, my eyes. Yeah, seven, September 77. Eh, it's close enough, it makes no odds. Anyway, that's what I'm wearing. This one, I gave this piece everything. Everything it runs. This thing is literally it's it's more accurate than my 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 Rolex sub. And I serviced that one too. This one is more accurate. Wow. Okay. What a great watch. Anyway, we... I'm not showing. We oh wait, we well, were supposed to have done wrist check already. <laughs> no, what we did, we did our I figured I saw the strap and I was like, I know what she's wearing. So I know. And you know, but uh, the me of a few minutes ago didn't know. So he'll be surprised, I'm sure, when he becomes me. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm just not asleep. It was hell on wheels getting out of bed this morning. And we just, you know, the usual thing. We, we, it's, not, it's never smooth sailing here. It's always lurching from crisis to crisis. And that's why life is the way it is. Any case, do you have any observations? No. Hmm. People are very glad to have you back, by the well, way. Well, that was nice. There were some very nice, um, effusive comments talking how glad they are to have you back. Thank you. <laughs> so I guess let's do it. Okay. Because I have to go shopping after this. From Jeff117, I wish I could talk to you. I found an estate auction local to me. Multiple cabinets of crystals, tools, manuals, lathes, Zeitz tools, staking sets, cleaners, etc. LOL, I w could spend a small fortune for it. To say I could use some advice is an understatement. Well, whatever happened with that, man? Um, I would have bought everything, like a lathe. I mean, was it being sold at, you know, watch person's estate prices? Or was it sold as, uh, here's my granddad's old crap? Um, cause I mean like jeweler's lays, good jeweler's lays are really expensive. What year of stuff was it? I'm wondering, uh, once, uh, there was somebody I was working with in Ohio and he had a, a thing like what you're talking about. And he went, um, uh, he, and this is afterwards. He came and talked to me. He said, Hey man, I found all this stuff. And I bought it figuring you could use it. And some of it I did use, but it was the seller, the original guy who had all the stuff he was a master watchsmith but he was active in like the 30s to like the 50s but he mostly worked on old pocket watches but anyway we ended up with all this stuff and eventually i think we just i don't know oh no we shipped it we sold it to somebody in china and we shipped it to china and then it all vanished in the mail and we lost the stuff and the money that was a very long time ago i still think about it actually i think about it sometimes and yeah. Yeah. Because the handset to my um, F300 Omega tuning fork ended up in that crap. But that's that's my fault because I, I, I knew it was in there. I meant to go look and then I forgot. Okay. Uh, Ella Bay forever. Yep. Spencer, if you tell me a particular Seiko movement is better than a particular Rolex movement, when I know you have stripped and reassembled both, well, that's a fact in my book. Well, I, I appreciate that. That's 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 a that's a nice vote of confidence. Um, I will not say Seiko is better than Rolex. I'm saying what I did say. I just want to clarify for other people because you didn't say this, but it's something I think about because I think some people are like. Seiko versus Rolex, and people have a lot of ideas about both brands. At the time of the movements that I was working on, when they were made in the mid 60s, they were, Rolex was very much set in their ways and doing things the way they'd always done them, whereas Seiko was extremely hungry and wanted to really beat the Swiss at their game. And so, a direct comparison of a Seiko 6216 movement, which is a it's a grand Seiko movement. It's essentially a 6246. Um, in fact, it's the same exact movement with just a slightly different number. Um, and so I compared a 6216 directly at the same time against a Rolex 1570, um, which is our was our own watch. I still I still have it. Um, and so it just was total happenstance. I managed to get them 
It just worked out that I had these two equivalent movements next to each other at the same exact time, and I was able to look at them at the same time. Oh, and the sickle blew it away. Really? Oh yeah, my God. The only advantage, the only advantage Rolex has that I've been able to figure out is Rolex uses the old style timing washers on the balance, and they do their, they adjust the accuracy by those means, there's no quick adjust. And so it means that you had a lot of positional stability, but I, I swear it's, it's not really necessary. Like Omega doesn't use free sprung balances. They never have. And the Speedmaster, the moon watch is an extraordinarily accurate watch. So I think Rolex is just being a butt and that's like, oh, we're Rolex. We have a free sprung balance. Omega never needed them. Seiko never needed them. Last time I ran into a non Rolex free sprung balance was on a wartime World War II Hellbross, like service style private purchase watch, and it had some wacky ETA movement in it. But it has a free sprung balance. But you you almost never see them because they're such a pain in the ass. Who invented them? That was the way it always used to be. That was pocket watch technology. So you always look at the pictures. The old pocket watches are there big ass balances mm -hmm. and they always have these timing screws around them uh, because they were not able to manufacture with enough precision in those days to be able to just pump out a balance and just do it. Whereas you look at, so you look at that Rolex balance, it's got all these screws on the outside. It looks like something you used to like, you know, read somebody's brain. It looks like some piece of scientific apparatus. Seiko at the same time, if you look at their balances, they have incredibly tiny balancing cutouts. Mm -hmm. So instead of adding all these freaking screws and having the thing going back and forth and dealing with timing screws, it's just nightmarish. Never mind doing, you know, you know, a, a, adjusting a Rolex for accuracy. But yeah, Seiko, they just, they have a machine. They, they put the teeny tiny balances in. And they were doing this in the 60s. And it goes, and it's just like a tire balancing machine. It figures out where the balance is. And then it has... it incredibly fine drills and sometimes it'll take it like like it has a little round thing and it'll cut out a slot in the underneath all for weight distribution and that's it one and done mm. one and done and you get that done you don't have to adjust anything you know the, the worst possible thing you could possibly happen to you is that the hairspring might get jacked up um but that's the most complex thing that one can imagine how are you doing by the way i'm okay hmm I understand I'm a little, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent behind the eight ball right now. I just want to make sure that the I'm not. The magic eight ball? Any, any eight ball. <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm not neglecting you. <laughs> anyway, go on. Uh, Auburn Sen. The 6619-7625 both state Sportsmatic on the dial. Is there a similarity or is it a coincidence or one of the predecessor? Seiko is this crazy thing for, I don't want to call them fake. They're, you know, they're weird sub-brands that they mm -hmm. use. Creedor and um, Wait, so Silver is it, Wave. Is it like... Gap is, well, I don't even know if they exist anymore, but they're also a Banana Republic and Old Navy. No, not mm -hmm. really. It's it's really weird. Seiko has things like, they're, they're sub-brands, and some of them actually have qualities that set them apart. Creedor is really high-end, really high-end. Like, they have, they had some really high-end quartz movements, very expensive. Silver Wave was... Japan, that was JDM, and they were mostly talking about water resistance, but things like Sportsman and Sportsmatic and Seahorse, uh, um, those kinds of things, they're like this weird catch-all brand, sub-brand that they sort of throw watches into that sort of are sort of a certain style. Sportsman, Sportsmatic, they put those labels on a billion different little watch models at the time through the 60s. Um, in the 70s, you really don't really see that anymore, I'm trying to think, but there really didn't seem to be much rhyme or reason except that they would be three-handers. And I'm trying to think. Not even date, no date or date. They loved using it. I, I don't, 
know what the reason was. Maybe it was trying to tell people that it was waterproof and shock resistant. I don't know. There's no real rhyme or reason that I can think of. And Zico has a, a ton of sub brands like that, like Sus and Spirit. And um, God, there are, there are just a, well, Seiko 5, of course, too. Sorry, I'm boring the socks off you. What? I'm just babbling. <laughs> normally what happens when people ask me a question, what normally happens is I hear the question and the answer just appears in my head, like the whole thing, like a paragraph. Boom, it's right there in front of me. Um, uh, and so sometimes that means that I, I have to make sure to parse out my statements so I can get to the end of what I'm thinking before I forget. And that's always interesting. Did you finish your thought? As far as I know, I did. The problem is, is I know there's a lot more weird sub-brands that I haven't discussed. There's just a billion of them. If ever you're bored, what you do, go uh, Google and uh, Google online for Seiko Catalog 1991 or go to the SeikoGuy.com. Uh, I plug his site because it's good reference material. Find the 1992 catalog it's 1992 uh, volume one. Uh, it should be uh, 146 pages. And it has page after page after page of all these different crazy sub brands. Uh, and I was just looking at them. It's, are the sub brands a different price point? Or? Yeah, they are. Like Credor, they have, it has its own logo. They tended to be very expensive. Um, they tended to be extremely thin mm. when they were made. A lot of them were, were really only sold in certain parts of the world. You see a lot of like Credor, Credor, Credor watches in like like the Middle East, Singapore, places like that. It's maybe they're for different different demographics, but they've there's I've seen so little consistency over a very long time. I just I don't think of them as being anything more than a, a marketing. Thing, but that might be wrong. Mm. What do I know? Mm. We can only make guesses. Uh, where am I? Did I? I don't remember which was the last one. Hmm? <laughs> Did I read that one yet? Yes, that was the last one. Oh. I was babbling on about Sportsmatic. Okay, from Randolph Cirillo. I do love Fridays. I love the puppy. He's over there. He is. I'd love to see what you say about these GMTs. Oh, well, the GMTs are great. He just went on his head, by the way. <laughs> um, the GMTs, I, I don't have much to say about them, but I do have this to say, thanks to Ryan Walters. We have the blue, black, and the orange are, are on hold. They're not here yet, but they are on hold. Uh, and I need, actually, I think he has them. In fact, I think I have to arrange money to pay him for them. Because then they'll ship them here, and then I can look at them. I haven't heard much about the the GMTs um, in terms of, I don't know, of people who've gotten their hands on them yet, besides Ryan Walters. But if you look at, if you go to Instagram and you look at Ryan Walters Fine Art, uh, you will, you'll find, uh, I'm sure he has pictures up of those. Because he went to the AD and he got them, like, Ooh. yesterday. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. You know, oh. He's got them. He's got them. He showed, he messaged me directly and on Instagram. So they're there. I just got to pay him and then we'll get the stuff. Cool. Mm. Mr. Bun 9L3? Mm. An L or an I? I don't know. It's great to have the dynamic duo back for these videos. Uh, case back stickers are one of those strange collector's obsessions. I've seen watches where the sweat has run under the sticker, ugh, stayed there, and left permanent marks and pitting over time. Do those, like, coincide with wrist cheese and hairy... <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, believe me. Wrist cheese has been a thing for a long time. No, but the I'm problem is the sweatiness of these with the stickers. I, it must have been. Those guys in the 60s and 70s, they never cleaned their watches. <laughs> it's like they bolted on a pair of underwear <laughs> when they got married, and they didn't take it off for the next 15 years. That's what these watches are like. They're incredibly filthy. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, on a watch that has clearly been used it's a liability and not nasa in my book i'd also love to see as much of the restoration of sabrina's brad pitt as possible whenever you do get to it even if it's in the next life 
Uh, I have an 8100A challenge timer. The case is black coated, base metal, and lightly pitted, and the dial had been rubbed by the minute register hand, but I managed to get an entirely NOS case and dial, which was amazing considering wow. how rare parts are for any old citizen. The movement looks to be very clean, but it's running at a million miles with nearly zero amplitude, and I haven't worn down a chrono before, torn down a chrono before. They are very 70s, and apparently it was sitting in the original owner's drawer since the 70s. Hmm. Yeah, tearing down a chronograph is... They're complicated, uh, but you know, the center of the movement is still going to be the same. It's still just a watch movement. Um, where Seiko and where Citizen, what they do, one of the things they did to ease the price of these amazing machines they were making is they, um, they have a lot of things where things are stamped and they're kind of held together by springs rather than like screwed together. So just in terms of talking about Japanese 70s chrono technology, they can be a little fiddly. It's not like this, the Swiss chronographs, which are like trucks. They're just bolted together. Like a, a lander on 248 is just bolted together. Same thing with like Valju 7750. They're, they're cam operated. They're really, really burly. Seiko chronographs and uh, the Citizen ones, they're a little more lightly built. You just got to be more careful. Biggest problem, of course, as you said, no spare parts. That's wild. I thought Seiko was like the worst for that. And there's no database that I'm... I'm sure there, there must... There has to be. There has to be a database. I know that Boli in Germany will often have some of that information, but I don't know where they get it. Um, and But the problem is, if you have the information, who stocks it? I've never gone to Burrell about an old citizen model and said, hey, I've got this, it's four dash, blankety, 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 and I'm looking for a crystal gasket for this thing. And they'll say, we don't have a, even have an entry for it. I know because I called. Uh... It's like they, they didn't even really support it. And I don't know where you'd find it. You find a lot of citizen parts on Yahoo Japan, but they're typically not translated and you have to really have your like, your, your query foo going if you want to try to cut a Japanese website in enough different ways to try to find what you're looking for. But I'm sure they're out there. Mm -hmm. You look so bored. I'm tired. Okay, she's tired. Sorry, I'm not bored. I can, like, start dancing. No, no, nothing like that. I mean, I'm entertaining imaginary people on the phone, but I want to make sure that you're happy. I'm happy. I mean, now I'm like, okay, should I go get Finny and, like, put one of the birthday hats on him and make him go boop, 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 boop. Maybe. He might enjoy that. <laughs> I'm surprised Diggy isn't over here yelling at us. No, he's busy sleeping. Uh, okay, from Neil Sengupta. Hi, Spencer, and welcome back, Sabrina. Hello. Uh, loved the Star Wars talk between the two of you at the end of your last mail call. I enjoyed Kenobi, but there were a lot of flaws. However, I am a long-term diehard Star Wars fan. On to my question. I have recently got a yellow Sushi Roll 1997 reissue, which is in great condition, but the original bracelet is tight on my 7-inch wrist. How different is it from the original? To me, it's when Seiko did reissues right. All the best, Neil. Well, we'd actually... I don't have one of those specific reissues. They are really cool, but I have the case for one. Mm. I do. I have an NOS case. I have no idea... Um, well, I used to remember where I got it from. I don't anymore. Um, <laughs> You've gotten lots of stuff over the years, so it's okay. I'm not surprised you don't remember everything. Well, the problem is, is that I rely on my memory. And the problem, though, is that if you rely on memory and you forget something, there's no way to remember that you forgot it. So, or there, it's rare to remember that you forgot something. So that means that uh, I don't actually know how much I know. Mm. No idea. You know a lot. But anyway, let's okay, break so and we'll, we'll look at those silly, cases. But I guess it's, well, I mean, it's something, right? Okay, so I only have two sushi divers in house. Believe it or not, this is the better of the two. So um, I could probably do some nice things for this one. It doesn't look as bad to me now as it, it used to. Um, I remember when it first came in, I thought this thing was going to be unsalvageable. But you know, looking at it now, I could make it better no no that's not true 
I'd probably make it okay. I could make it better than okay. Put some love into it. Poor old thing. Poor old thing. Even that blue nice and shiny. Pity some of the, you know, the printing is missing on the dial. And somebody was just being a dingleberry with the, the top of the marker. So I'm going to have to research how to do, gosh, some kind of gun bluing on brass. I'm sure it can be done. I just haven't explored that. But anyway, that's an original style case. Okay. There it is. You'll notice it's a UFO style case with an even spin all the way around. So it's just it's a smooth cone that then was machined and thusly. Solid bezel, curved diddly, like so. This is a case from those reissues. I am, so, you know, someday it'd be nice to be able to find everything to build something in this or failing that, find a way to build something in this case. But they did a good job. This is pretty much what they looked like. I, this one wasn't even a sample watch. Somebody stripped out everything, and I, I, I am, I'm getting a feeling I should be remembering this. Uh, somebody modded the inside of this, I think. I'm not sure. I'm not denigrating anybody. I'm just like, my memory is sometimes, like I said, I rely on it perhaps too much. But this is a lovely piece. I'm just waiting for the right stroke of inspiration. But the... Uh, I mean, look at the angles. Why can't Seiko do this now? I mean, and you're, you know, you're right. I haven't thought about these in a while. They did a great, great job on this case. I mean, it's not identical, but damn, they did a really good job on it. They even got the, the hollow ground section between the end links. Well, they probably used the same machines or similar machines. Yeah, look at that with the circular brush. This is the new case. Circular brush on the high polished sides. They did a nice job. It's even a nice top crystal there. Let's see if we can get a... Whoops, I had it upside down. That will not work. Yeah, I look at that. The proportions were almost perfect. What happened? I've really got to come up with something to put in this. Something that'll look legit. Hm, I'll think about that. That's cool. And we're back. 24-7-80-T. Welcome back, Sabrina. Hopefully your return will be stress-free. Yes, I'm sure it will be. Our lives are not stress-free. I am trying to be... You're more, better You're better than I am. I used to be a high-strung person, and now I'm like, you know what? Freaking, I am mellow. Everything is cool. I, all I want to be is just absolute... I want to be as calm as a capybara every single day, all day long. I just want to just drift along. But... I don't, I'm not wired that way, so I tend to be irritable and spiky and annoyed by almost everything or, that happens around me if I'm in the wrong mood. It just, it doesn't matter what well, it is. Well, part of the reason why I was like, hell yeah, about the Brad Pitt watch is not because of Mr. Pitt, though, I mean, come on. Um, no, I want Cliff Booth is like my patron state. Like, I want to be like him with his attitude, like... He's like hanging out with his rich buddy and he's super supportive of him and everything's cool. And he lives in a, a trailer, but he's like, yeah, I He's got, perfectly happy. I'm perfectly happy. He's going to, you know, he's just whatever. And that's kind of my goal to be like, whatever. And everything's fine. That is one of the, the less noted pieces about that movie, which is amazing because his character, you always think Cliff Booth is the main guy in this movie, right? And you always think that he's the main guy and there's lots of bad things and good things and weird things that are happening in the movie, but he just cruises through. Mm -hmm. He goes from the start of the movie to the end of the movie and all this stuff is happening around him and he's just as calm as a log in a swimming pool. He's just sitting there, going through life, doing his stuff, <laughs> you know, 
you know, defending his boss's house from from drug crazed hippies. <laughs> It's a great movie. It's a, it's, if you have not seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, it's, and you say, well, I, do, I don't really like, you know, Tarantino movies or I've never seen any. It's a cool movie and it's its, its own thing. And you would not have had to have seen anything else uh, of his to understand it. And he will, he, he explain. He, you can drop into it. Knowing nothing, you can drop into it. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, Spencer, when you build your lightsaber, what color will the blade be? Green or orange? As always, positive vibes. I don't know. Um, all of the things that I'm... All the rocks that I'm finding that I consider worthy of... Well, you know, how about this? I mean, I could just do a segment at the end where I talk about some of the rocks that I found. Because um, I really want to... I don't want to just sort of randomly put crap together... Though apparently you can do that. There's a thing called, um, what do they call it? They call it a, 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 a not a junk saber, like a junk nobi or, <laughs> or, or a junk, I don't know. Basically, but like you can go to Home Depot. It's like not a challenge. It's like a hobby thing for people to build lightsabers. Apparently go to Home Depot and you just wander around in the hardware department until you can basically assemble pieces that look like a lightsaber, junk saber. And, uh, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to have it be not just interesting to look at and not just attractive to look at, but something that I can tell stories about. Something that has meaning to me. Conversation piece. Indeed. Though it's so disappointing that there's no way to make one that's real. I'm sure many, many, many people say the same thing. Well, not because I want to cut holes in something. No, I just I, I just don't like having things that are props. I don't I don't like having things that aren't what they're supposed to be. That's why my sword is, that, that thing is real. Well, it's time to get your sciencing on. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, man. Containment fields for some kind of laser sword? No idea. Connor Whitworth, talking case back stickers. My 6218-8950 still has blue green remnants of the sticker. It's a stunning, stunning dolphin case back. They really made such an effort back in the day. I have a few Seikos with their original frosting effect around the wave or whatever. Another small but beautiful detail that Seiko have dropped. Details, details, details. Yeah, everything's all about the details. I mean, we why don't we have a little say I actually I love the when I think about case back stickers, I, I I value them and treasure them because when I see them, that means the watch wasn't necessarily worn a lot. It also means that I can guess, I can anticipate that um, the watch is going to be pretty original and untouched. And that means it's a learning opportunity because I'm going to be able to see what untouched looks like. It just rather than guessing, I can see the thing in front of me. So let's break. I'll show you some of my case packs. I don't know, a million. Generally, the newer ones, I don't, I don't try to save them. This one's, this one's sort of an exception. Um, it's, it's stayed on. This is the, this is, this is my solar Arnie uh, that was in um, the, my review of these. I've been doing this at wearing this thing out in the garage. But so, so, so far, it's okay. I haven't seen anything sneaking in here, but I don't think it's ever going to wear down to, and I used to, I used to not really understand because this is what I thought. I thought these were just some kind of super smooth, like super tight plastic, but they're, they're, they have to be some kind of a paint. Yeah. I mean, you can barely see it on this one, but it's actually, this is a sample case back. Let me drop the lights there a little bit, but it has this kind of bluish shimmer but it's in this period which is the early, early mid 70s uh they 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 on the 6139s they were like this they were really really thin um and they would and they would they would grip pretty well but then start flaking off here's an earlier one again very very thin You know, it's, it's always nuts to find something like that. I guess you can probably see it best like right in there. Yeah, and you know what? Look at that. That looks like it was liquid, liquid when it was applied, doesn't it? Do you see that? Looks like it was, like, runny or something. I guess that sort of proves it, doesn't it? Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Maybe I'm wrong. 
Maybe that's just bits where it chipped off and then wore, but sure looks like that was different thicknesses and it was liquid. <laughs> that's pretty cool. This is a neat one. This is for one of these, one of the bigger ones. This one was almost completely unworn, uh, and I don't, something bad happened to it. Anyway, but that's what these look like when you see these, like, etched cases. Uh, when they were, you see, I, when you see them in, I mean, they're usually just, just worn, just flat as nothing. Let's see if I got that 83 old bag out here. Uh, I would have sworn I did. Did I? No, that's not it. I am scrabbling for me. Oh, oh, it's right here. I hit it. Let's see now. No. No, no, no. Actually, that's an excellent example. Good. The very one I wanted. Same case, same. Make and model. So they last, initially, they last pretty well. I've, uh, I've dug through and I've looked at some of the others and uh, you get some other ones that, that last pretty nicely, even without the case back stickers. This is, uh, this is the case back on a... There's not really much. There's a little bit, you see, there's some of the case back sticker right there, right there in the gap, and it's sort of that purple color. And where we see that purple color, I don't know, it goes back and forth. I see blue, but then like in the, once like this, like the 70s, that divers kicked in, um, they started getting this kind. And this is the original case back to this case. And what I have determined, more or less, as far as I can tell, is that that's the original innards, because all of that stuff matched, and this was a service case, because it doesn't, it is not stamped sample. It is, however, marked assembled, Japanese parts assembled in Hong Kong, and you can see like that the frosted surface underneath that sticker. Yeah, it has to be paint. Anyway, there it is. One of my most beloved, I just love this thing. I've just been wearing it and wearing it and wearing it. Okay. I'm sitting here wool gathering. I didn't even realize the thing wasn't on. I just got this image in my head, because I've never heard the term wool gathering before, of you being like wrapped in wool, and then a bunch of moths came and attacked you. They'd have to be, I'd have to be either really slow or they'd have to be really fast. What Terry Pratchett used to call the, uh, the 303 bookworm. <laughs> no, it was a special bookworm that evolved in high magic libraries to be able to deal with the incredibly high background levels of magic, which would be akin to radiation in our world. And so the bookworm evolved to be able to go through books at just subsonic <laughs> speeds. That's Funny. Yeah, good old, good old. And you could tell when Terry, when you read, when I read that, it was literally, it was just a throwaway thing. I don't ever remember him mentioning it before or after. I think it was just one of these things. He was like, blip, when he was writing, and he just, out it came on the page, and he just walked away. And you get a lot of stuff like that with Pratchett. There's so much smart stuff buried in his work. The 303 bookworm. 303 is a caliber. Uh... It's a bullet caliber. Uh, it was a very, very popular bullet caliber for hunters because a lot of the um a lot of them used old um surplus rifles hmm. okay from oscar gustavo or coast ruiz mm. honey there ain't nothing to do to it but to do it there ain't nothing to it but to do it uh, sabrina was like what was i i don't, I, I don't know i don't i don't remember <laughs> it's but i've been saying that how you said how i've been said that Forever. I know. I I because he quotes things all the time. I'm quoting I, myself. I know, but I thought he was quoting like I don't know the Simpsons or something, and it's, I just forgot. Well, I know. I mean, I've said it for so long. I don't remember when I started saying it. 
Maybe I got it from someplace. Maybe I got it and I forgot. Maybe. I've been saying it for so long, I don't. It started out as sort of a thing for me to sort of jolly myself along to do the thing I don't want to do. That's an ADHD thing. You know the thing you're supposed to do. You know you need to do it and you don't want to do it. And that's not just, I don't want to do it. It's like, you don't, it's like this, it's like a, it's like it, you physically in your brain, you don't want to do it. Like you don't want to, it's like eating something disgusting. You just don't want to do it. It feels like that. So you say there ain't nothing to it, but to do it. And you got to do it. You got to, got to start rolling. You sold the Burke and the Pulse O meter, and they came back to you. That must mean something. Don't let them go again. No, I think it's wise. I'm actually I'm happy about the Burke. Um, I figured you would be because you really like that one. You like that one more than any of the other aliens watches. It was actually a lost opportunity for me to make a short video, and I was like, I just don't want to do it. There's that ADHD thing, <laughs> but I pulled that Burke apart because I was like, this is a nice watch, and then I was I tested it, and it's a runner. Uh, but the problem is somebody broke off one of, they, 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 they snapped the head off of one of the four screws that screws things to the, uh, that screws everything into the main plate. And so that whole shafty thing was useless, which means the main, entire main plate and everything else was useless. So I had actually, I had a, an unusual situation to do a repair I've never done before. It's true. I mean, I've done that. Well, I mean, I've never done that repair before on an Ernie. But basically, you have to take that shaft, drive it out because it's a friction fit. And you have to scavenge another one from another plate that is bad in another way, but has a good post. And then you push that one back in. And I did it with that movement. That whole watch, though, because I try to be good, I don't I work on my own stuff when I have time. And, uh, and all the stars align. So the watch has actually been apart and fully cleaned for three days. All I have to do is assemble it. All the repairs have been done. It's sitting over there waiting for me to make time to put it back together. And then I will have a Burke again. I'm pretty excited about that. The pulse meter, it's not quite the right model, but I like it a lot. I, I love the fact that it is... Uh, I love the fact that it's, I don't think about aliens with this watch because of the coloration. This was a JDM only one because of the coloration. This is a Boba Fett. It just needs, it, <laughs> seriously, it just needs a, a element of brick red somewhere. And these are Boba Fett colors. We should, I don't know, paint red on the, whatever the heck that says. I can't even read it. And what's cool the other two JDMs of these that were made at that time, one, so this is a Boba Fett. Another one is all red. Even the strap is red. Huh. Just like the Emperor's security guards. And the third one is all black. <gasps> I'm telling you. Accidental Star Wars. The only thing they don't have is they don't have anything Jedi. But that sure as heck looks like something Boba Fett would wear. Can you imagine? Imagine Boba Fett in the 1983's Return of the Jedi. Um, and he had something like this strapped on. People wouldn't even think about it. Uh, Denny Salg? Uh, sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Spencer or anyone else, do you know of a vintage Seiko Quartz analog GMT? I was thinking it would be cool to add a GMT comp... Compli complication, compilation to my vintage Seiko quartz collection. I can't. There may be one that exists. I can't bring one to mind. Uh, but that's in large part because my brain is yelling at me that the you, one may not exist, but one can make one. Um, all you need to do is you take the twenty-four hour gear from uh, a, like a 6117 like world time because that's a 6000 series you take that stuff that from the front with a 24-hour wheel and all that crap and you can put it on the front of a 7548 or 7 uh, 7548 movement or 7546 and as long as the dial you're using has a hole big enough in the middle for the 24-hour wheel it works right on you can you can in fact you convert you can convert a 6306 or a 6309 or 
6119 or 6106 or 754 blank. Not a 7549 because there's a whole bunch of things that are weirdly different with its calendar, but all those other ones, yes, you can do it. It would be a, it would be locked into the main train. It would not be independently adjustable, but it would be a 24 hour hand. You could do it. You just have to be willing to cannibalize a 6117 world time. But aren't they worth anything or does anybody? Well, they're, they're worth things if they are in original condition. Making a mod like what I'm talking about, I don't think. Well, no, worth... I mean, like, would you be like, I can't believe I'm taking this thing apart. It's worth so much money. Well, yeah. I mean, I've got a couple. I'm sitting here thinking about this. I'm like, well, you know, in the old days, I've got a couple world times over there that are in the old days would be considered. I don't know, something you keep around maybe for parts. These days, they're in really nice condition. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things got stripped for parts, but I think those days are over. Mm -hmm. if, I, if you could find a stash of the parts outside of a watch, sure, why not? Any case, what do we got going on? Uh, a gape movement. My dad gave me his 6309-7040 when I was a kid. It is pretty beat up uh, now. I want to get it restored. I have no idea how or where to start. Um, you want to get it restored or learn how to restore it yourself? <laughs> when you say it's beat up, like how kind of beat up? Like what do you mean? What kind of beat up? Is how, what what color is the loom? Is the loom white or is it is it blackened and nasty and moldy looking or is the dial loom good and the hand loom is bad? Is the is the how's the insert on the rotating ring? Like when you look at that at your dad's 6309, the insert here, is that in good shape? Or is it all beaten up? Does it still run? Um I don't know. You gotta start somewhere. You you put this comment, that helps. Um, I guess the first thing is for you to figure out, one, what kind of condition it's in, and two, figure out how much money you're willing to invest in restoring it. Um, first step is to see how it looks. If you want to, leave a comment with a picture and I'll look at it, or you can email a picture with a follow-up question to kvw at kleinvintagewatchrepair.com. That's kvw at kleinvintagewatchrepair.com. Just put a note in there too and tell me that it's in reference to this and we'll look at it. From the Seiko Path. Hello. Hey Spencer, I'm an avid Pogue collector and I consider myself well versed on the history, but I know nothing about the 6002s with the chiclet bracelet. I wanted to ask if you could give me some history on that bracelet and maybe even a close up shot of one you have. I still haven't decided if I like them or not many. Thanks and very much appreciated. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'll make a segment about them actually. It's pretty cool. I'll bring out some of my catalog and I have my original 6139 with its original chiclet bracelet. I have a lot of chiclet oh, bracelets. So the problem is I don't have any in links to go with them. Did you name there it is, the origin story. It's, this is the watch where it came from. Uh, this is back when we were still living the, uh, the old house, and Sadie was whew, she was very, very young. And I got this on eBay. I got into a bidding war, actually, with uh, one of the. Uh, I found it later with one of the, the with the prime movers and shakers over at the Sago Collector Watch Forum. It was, actually come to think of it a little huffy to me after that but anyway uh, i won this for uh, i beat him out for 137 dollars that this was 12 13 years ago and what i had been thinking and hoping because i was chasing down i was chasing down information about well a bunch of different watches but i was looking specifically for more information about the 6139-6009s, because I was busy hot on their trail. Uh, hang on. Because I had finally found documentation that they were an actual model that existed. So, that's what this is. I, I, if you magnify that, it says resist. And it's on the H-Link, and it's got the, the 6009 dial. Anyway. It's a complete set. All the cards are there in 
red and red and uh, gray. But anyway, I was really hot on these, okay? And you'll notice these are the American versions of these, basically. But these were resist and those were proof. Um, and so I kind of mistook this one in the, because the auction pictures weren't great. And then it showed up and I'd come home from work and Sabrina handed it to me and we were sitting in the, standing in the kitchen. And I was looking at it and I was like, that's a weird bracelet, isn't that wild? Hmm, that's nutty. And, uh, and then I saw that it was, uh, wasn't a resist, that it was proof. And I was like, woo, God, um, I haven't done anything to it except uh, at some point I must have replaced this bezel. I can't say I remember or don't remember, but it's, it's not properly aligned with the dial, but it shouldn't have this. That's a replacement right there. And I'm, I, it would, these were, you know, the, the original ring probably had a few marks on it. So I decided to go this way. Let's see if I can get one closer to what it looked like. But anyway, when you're standing there, I was like, wow, that's things of proof. That's really cool. And then I turned it around and I was like, oh wow, damn, Seiko. That's a Seiko bracelet. That's wild. That's crazy. What is this thing? I was like, wow, these links, they look like they look like chiclets. That funky. So anyway, I had two mysteries on my hands. I was still chasing down information on, on my 6139, 6009, U.S. version. That's the international version, but with this chiclet. Okay. So, always looking for more information on the 6139, 6009s. Digging, digging, digging relentlessly on eBay. Digging, digging, digging. And I come across this folded up little brochure for this company um, in 1972 uh, and they uh, resell sort of I think overstock of Seiko watches and I got this cool thing and I'm just you know there's a lot of cool there's a lot of really cool models um, here and you can you know it's there's a lot of really nice stuff and there's some good documentation on here not just for my 6139s either um, this is one of the hang let's go in a little closer so i happened to oh this was also back in the beginning also of the very beginning of the time talking about the aussie pogues and uh people at that time there was no documentation of any kind for the aussie pogues none where you would have a brightly colored dial and a black ring no documentation at that time that anyone was aware of this is the first piece of print media I was aware of that said that these things were not made up. They were a fact. It's right there. You can see it because I had actually bought one on eBay. I had one of these. This exact, well, mine was a 6001. The only difference with that is the 6001s uh, didn't have the notch case. They had the later case. I don't know why, but they did. Uh, but that watch was awesome. I know where that watch is, but what are you going to do? Um, but... Then, like a bolt of lightning, I'm looking at some later point. What is that thing on? Because people had been telling me, no, 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 no. That's not. The, these same old timers. Probably somebody who was pissed that he lost the auction. Well, what do I know? Casting aspersions. Anyway, but they were like, no, no, no. It's not an original bracelet. I don't believe it. There's no documentation. There it is. Just, I know I sound kind of like probably a little mean and triumphant, but there were some people over there. They really, really worked to try to keep me down. I don't know. I still don't know why. Well, what are you going to do? Not everybody's going to like you. Anyway, so there it is. There it is. There's the chiclet bracelet. Uh, the thing that really confirms it as such is that it has the Stellox hidden lug design. You can see there's no slot in the end link right here because it has this underside flip over piece this sort of hidden lug thing that's what that is you'll see no slot that's what that is original checklet um since this time more have been found i'm not aware of a lot of them i'm like like four or five but i'm sure there's a lot more that i don't know but there it is there's the checklet it's made by stellux oh come on 
Spencer, you're getting old in your old age. Let's see, where is it? There you go. Stellux. That's it. Anyway, but it also has these lovely, beautiful, um, double-ended Stellux flat clasps. The cool thing about these one, you didn't have to worry about long or short ones because unlike Seiko loving to cut corners to save a few pennies, Stellux just made them all the same length. But the great thing about this, not a lot of people know, you can these you can adjust them from both sides. It's actually, it's kind of cool. So if you have the links kind of where you like them and it, the, the buckle's, you know, it's still not sitting in the right place, you can actually move the whole thing back and forth and it'll land in a separate place. And because the click is on the fold, it doesn't matter where this is. It, it's, it's crazy. You can do it. I don't think it's authorized, but I do it. And yeah, this is a cool, cool piece. That's a cool piece. A lot of... 1617 6410 navigator 1617 6400 world time look 70 meter sport diver 6119 6020 oh yeah look it's got the exposed crown right there handy dandy sport diver i have one of these in my junk drawer it is it is quite literally junk there you go slim case 6105 isn't it wild? But interesting, they named it by the dial code. Yeah, baby. Uh, that's beautiful. A lot of dress watches. A lot of cool things. Now, oh, there's your, there's your Bellmatic. A couple of Bellmatics. A couple, three Bellmatics. One, three Bellmatics. Regular old Seiko 5. Oh, that's a 5200. I thought that was something. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I I have this watch, that watch. I, um, I think I actually have that one as well. I definitely have that one. No, yes, yes in pieces. Um, oh, look at this, it's even, they were even selling the electrics. These are the ones with the mechanical, the mechanical balance driven by a battery. So I have that, I don't have the bracelet. I uh, don't have that one. 5626 certified chronometer. So you're supposed to, you pay 6560 for it, you sell for 9260. That's your, there's your margin. This one actually, this is legitimately a model that I want. Like legitimately, legitimately. I want that watch. Chronometer officially certified, but it's in this really big sort of heavy uh, machined like um, God, it's almost like a car top carrier old school like Airstream case It's very it's very very cool. There's only one around that I found recently that I went to bajillion dollars for it uh, I own that one actually I own two of these Is that uh... Yeah, 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 that's a 7,005, so is that. Uh, I have this watch, actually I have a couple of them. That's a ladies watch. I think I may actually have one of those. Yeah, I got the ELs on here. Uh, if you go, if we're going down yonder, you see they got the, they got, a, they got the Rally Chrono, Jumbo, Tokizara. And that Tokizara is gonna be, that's gonna be the, that's going to be the, 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 the dark dial with the gray subdials. That's what that one is. It's not the blue eye. This is the Australian one. Or the, you know, the Oceania, Oceania one. I like Oceania. How about that? Does that work? Can somebody please tell me if that works? Because I think it's a much more poetic thing. I'm sure I have a few of those cases. I probably have one of those watches. Oh man, I had, I had this watch with this really cool cornflower blue dial and it was like in perfect condition with the original bracelet and everything. Man, I've never seen another one. Never seen another one and I sold it like a ding dong. You know, but that's what ding dongs do. Ding dong do what ding dong does, which I ding dong did. 
Yeah, 5606 LMs. That's a nice one. This is the sort of standard sort of GS case, you know, with the, with the flat, you know, semi-hooded. 7006, another nutty 7006. I definitely have one of those. This is 5100. I've got a few of these. I don't have that bracelet though. That is the GB Champion bracelet, I think. Another 5606. There's some of those dials. I don't have that handset though. What the heck is that thing? 5606, 8110, 25 Jewel. Pretty tight little piece on a train track bracelet. That's an interesting choice for handsets. Huh, isn't that neat? Oh, and the last one, of course, is cool. We got right over it. Oh, there's a closer look. Note, by the way, a lot of these are salesman samples. They have the regular, the correct, like Seiko time. Or actually, very few, I'm sorry, some do. I'm sorry, most do, but some don't. Most notably, this one. That was an actual watch. It would normally be, um, they typically have like Monday the 6th, I think, or Tuesday the 6th, but that would have been aligned. Now, the other big argument that people got into is, is this a gold dial or a silver dial? Now, I know for a fact that this is a silver dial. I know for a fact, because I have one. Uh, heck, I could probably take the darn thing out. Um, 6139. Uh, I found you. Just like that. Yep, I see you. Oh, man. So, this is unrestored. It's a little lighter than that in reality. It's not quite that blue. Okay, but there it is. So, eh, good enough. All right, so there, there you can see the silver. That's what the silver looks like. There you go. Silver actually in bright light, which is probably how it would, because you can actually see the flashes on, on this. Look, you can see where the glare was. The guy was putting over on it. So it was, it was almost like that. That's, that's almost how bright it was. So that's silver, not the gold. And then I guess we can compare this to that. Do these seem to be the same color? The same kind of shading? Does this look a little darker? I don't know. I go back and forth. I suspect it's a gold dial. I've always said it was a gold dial. I always thought it was a little darker um, than this, which is this blue. I mean, know for a fact that it's that blue. So, who knows? I say it's a gold. Other people have said, no, 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 that's a silver. Well, I, I, maybe. But that if that was a silver, of course, that's a completely different silver from this. That bright, bright silver is not that sort of bluish periwinkle. So if anything, uh, that kind of a silver dial, well, I don't know. Who knows? You guys tell me what you think. You know what? It's too late for me. Um, well, in terms of tonight being awake and asleep. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's pretty neat, isn't it? I think so. Okay. That's the end of that segment. I have a lot of chiclet bracelets. The problem is I don't have any end links to go with them. Did you name them chiclet bracelets? Yes, I did. <laughs> I'm the one that named them the chiclet. Do they still sell chiclets? No, God, though. They haven't. They made, they were Seiko. No, I'm talking about the gum. You know, I looked for chiclets a while back. I can see the package, the little flat pack, and right. it's got a hole with like a, with like a thing over it. I haven't seen chiclets in a long time. I, I love the, the, I always liked them because I, they were, they, they were kind of like, um, those, the, they're kind of like, um, oh, fruit stripe gum that it tastes great for like <laughs> three seconds and then it goes completely flat. Same thing with chiclets. I wonder why I never chewed them. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I like them. I miss them. I think, I, I, I don't know if they still make them. I'm sure they do. I don't know. They're, they're pretty cool, but yeah, it's one of the things I'm very, very proud of. Naming that a chiclet. I named something else recently, and it was a good name. 
and I can't remember what it is. I'm Wait, like, like, has it caught on? Or? Well, no, like, the, like this just happened. I was looking at some watch, and I'm like, this, oh, wait, I'm, I'm holding it. I am such, I did not sleep well. The Boba Fett. Yes, and you just told us about it. But the, but the problem is, <laughs> this model is so rare, there's no, I can't imagine there's ever going to be a worldwide collector base of people who are going to collect accidentally Star Wars color coordinated Acc three special edition they weren't even special edition jdm only watches from japan that were made for a very short period of time that accidentally happened to use the same colorways as three star wars characters i just don't think it's going to catch on no well especially because aren't there star wars watches theme watches somebody oh did? my god yeah there's no all kinds. like one of uh, an actual brand not mm -hmm. like a fashion one no. oh no no absolutely yes you're right they had them i can't remember who was it people i can't remember they were it was a promotional thing when the sequels first came out they had i can almost see them they had a stormtrooper was it casio I think it was. It was Casio, I think it was. It I was, wanted the Boba Fett one, but I think they were more money than what I would... Were they G-Shocks? I don't remember. It was so long ago. It was a really long time yeah. ago. They were pretty cool. But anyway, you know what? So I might be the only one in the world who calls this Boba Fett because I'm the only one in the world who apparently still owns one. Uh, so I'm going to call this one Boba Fett and everybody else can call theirs whatever they want. Um, anyway, that's about it. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't think of anything else. Anything else? If I find a door, I'll let you know. Okay. Okay, bye. Bye. Oh, an addendum. There are going to be, talking about Star Wars here, talking about Kenobi specifically, I just want to put out there, I have a few th Star Wars theories. Uh, my first main Star Wars theory is that the armorer is, is either going to be, I think the armor is going to turn out to be maybe Bo-Katan. Um, I, my theory is, is that it's going to turn out that she is playing both sides of the whole like Mandalore, um, holding the dark saber kind of thing from both sides and that she is the armorer in disguise creating basically a, a private army of crazy people uh fanatics who will follow her um and so hang on just one second what's up buddy hey sebastian what are you looking for, looking for mommy. mommy she's upstairs she, she she should be taking off her scary makeup um what was he saying i just lost my train of thought I literally forgot what I was going to do. Well, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to talk about point two. I'm talking about Kenobi. Still. The character of Riva. It never occurred to me to think about her. I, I liked the character. I thought she fit in well. I understood what she was doing. Uh, I thought it was interesting to expand the Inquisitors to being beyond, like, brainwashed, purely evil uh, true believers. I thought it was interesting that she was a more complex character. I believed her motivations. Star Wars loves reducing everything to dichotomies, blacks and whites. And, uh, you know, yes and no's, absolutes, only a Sith de deals in absolutes, which of course is an absolute statement in of itself. She was a nice mix of gray, which, which I liked and I understood her arc. Um, and I was sympathetic to what she went through and she was given an opportunity to make the right choice and she did. And so what's good about that is that Kenobi could, even if he, he, even if he was forced to face the fact that, that Anakin was gone or that he was utterly fallen and gone, um, at least he saved Reva or at least helped Reva save herself. So I thought that that was, I thought that was very good. I, I loved the, the extra depth finally given uh, to Luke's aunt and uncle, Owen and uh, Baru. Uh, and, I, you know, it's nice they made him badasses. And, you know, it's it's good. It makes every, That makes it all better. But people really love that. But, man, the hate that Reva, 
her character is getting from a section of the fan base is just driving me nuts. There was some guy, I just saw it this morning on the Star Wars subreddit. Somebody went through and did a fan edit of all of Kenobi. And everybody's like, oh yeah, it's great. And what he did is he accomplished making the shorter, better thing. He, he cut out a lot of stuff and rearranged a few things. But he, the person explicitly, explicitly went in and excised almost everything of Reva. Just cut it out. Uh, and I don't, I understand that somebody would want to do this because they don't want to have anything messed with in terms of their glorious OT feeling they want to have there their Obi-Wan and everything else like that. At the same time, you see all these people complaining that isn't there anything outside the Skywalker saga? Well, you know, maybe Reva might lead that way, and they're going to get there. They have to do it at some point. But my big theory, this is my second theory, my second theory about Star Wars, about this, is that we are going to find, I bet you, that Reva was... Reva's character will be slotted in to the spot of uh, Cara Dune's character space. Um, and because she's already on Tatooine, she already is at loose ends. She's no longer an Inquisitor. She doesn't have her lightsaber anymore. She's a good combatant. She's a fighter. She's gray. But she seems to be erring on the side of good. But she's got enough gray in her that she could be an ass kicker too. Talking about Reva. I'm so, I just realized there was some, I wanted that, somebody was talking about Star Wars, and I was thinking about my Reva stuff, like my theory about how they're going to slaughter into being Cara Dune's character space. Mm -hmm. Somebody on Star Wars subreddit made a fan edit of all of Kenobi, and the number one thing they did uh, is basically they cut out everything Reva did. Whatever. It's like, you, they are like, why isn't there any new Star Wars, new characters? Why is it always the Star War, Skywalker saga? And then they're, you give them Reva and they're like, nope, not well, like that. Well, she's a black woman. <gasps> oh my God. Well, but that's true. That is true. Sorry I mean, if I offended but anyone. But it's, but it's, look, you know how we know that's true? The criticism of Reva's character began when the still, when promotional pictures were mm -hmm. released. Literally, only thing you know about her character, literally, actually, you know two things. One, that she's an Inquisitor, and two, she's black. Mm -hmm. And people were bitching and bitching and bitching, like, the second they saw that, talking about woke. Yeah, because uh, black people can't have jobs, apparently. Right, and there never had been black people in Star Wars yeah, before. Never, absolutely never. You people need to get over it. Yes, sir. Any know. case, in any case, I'm looking forward to it. So if they can resurrect Rangers... Uh, you know, like they were gonna do. I mean, sh that means she would hang out with uh, Grief Karga and uh, Carl Weathers, of course. And man, that'd be awesome. I think it'd be a lot of fun. So there's a lot of good stuff coming. Anyway, that's my mindless ramble about uh, Star Wars and my complaints about Star Wars fans who hate everything having to do with Star Wars. But anyway, I'm a little discombobulated. Hopefully that all made sense. Um... Oh, my first theory, the only other option is maybe it could be, no, it wouldn't be Sabine. It's got to be a character, I'm talking about the armor, has to be somebody we'd known before, otherwise they wouldn't be making a point of hiding her. Oh, another reason, by the way, you're going to see more of Reva, she was literally, literally classmates with Grogu, like literally, they were, they were classmates, and both Grogu and Reva would have been involved in some level, at least tangentially, with all of these senior Jedi, including Obi-Wan. And it's, um, and obviously Anakin Skywalker, so she's probably going to show up in the Mandalorian, too. She'd make a good Mandalorian. Reva would. That's another option. Man, if she joined up with Din, whew, she'd be a great, great Mandalorian, and she could teach him how to use a lightsaber even better. Anyway... That's my Star Wars ramble. Uh, uh, the last thing I think I'm going to do is, for all of you who need a Pirates of the Caribbean fix, I'm not sure who of you there are, the third movie was based on a book by one of my favorite authors, but I didn't actually really put these two things together. I didn't realize this book was what that movie was based on, but they jacked with the script so much I didn't even remember it. This is one of the greatest pirate books ever written. And the, this was the starting point for that movie. So if you're bored, you need something to read, and you like pirates, read this one, Tim Powers. One of my favorites. Okay, folks, I'm done. I can always talk Star Wars, but you don't want to talk to me right now. Okay, folks, I'll talk to you later.